The brew house was created to capture and share with you the long history of the Genesee Brewery. But the brewery itself isn't half as interesting as the beer and the people who make it. Visit GeneseeBrewHouse.com. Hi everyone and welcome to the original Rochester Press Box presented by the Genesee Brew House. I'm Bill Pucko, happy to be with you and even more happy to be joined once again by Kevin O'Clubger from the Democrat Chronicle, our uh, Red Wings and Amrix beat writer. Nice to have you back, Kevin. Oh, it's good to be here. Mike Catalana, co-hosting here from 13 Wham News. Good to be back. And Pat Duffy from WCMA. Hey. <laughs> uh, let's start with your beats. We're sort of between season here. Uh, you know, the Red Wings just finished, the Amrix are start up in about a month. Uh, We've gone so long without a championship from either one of these teams. Is there something inherent in Rochester that's, like, getting in our way? Well, I mean, it's tougher for the Amherst now than it used to be with 30 teams in the league. So much tougher for anyone to win it. Just the odds are against you. However, you would think they would have won a playoff series. Not once since 2005. That's a long, long time for a franchise that, I mean, just look at it. I cover baseball and hockey now for us at the Democrat and Chronicle. The Amherst used to play until late May every year or every other year. They went to the finals. They would go to June, into June. That would be halfway through the baseball season. I couldn't, you couldn't do it. But now, just okay, April 17th is their last game. Okay, well, that's when they're going to be done playing. <laughs> that counts for the DNC giving you both beats. They're yeah, just and figuring then, that I mean, they no baseball, longer uh, Baseball is a, well, the, the Red Wings won 81 games this year. They were the fourth best team in the league. They did very well against the division winner, Scranton. They're not in the playoffs. A team that's 12 under, 13 under, is in the playoffs. Gwinnett. The whole division was under 500, but four-team division, just the way they set up in the IL, they automatically get in. My suggestion was combine the, the two divisions and make it eight teams, leave the North as it is with six, now you have two division winners get in, and then the next best two records. They didn't more. listen to your suggestion, did they? No, they haven't listened to anyone <laughs> in 30 years. <laughs> well, Why mean, would they? This is, this is a league that, uh, after 9-11, awarded a championship to the team that led the series 1-0. Every other league in baseball declared co-champions. But the IL, because the team had won a game, said, oh, here are the champs. If you want to talk Amherst, I mean, it's one guy's fault, right? You bring it up. 2005, there hasn't been a playoff series win. It's Darcy Regeer. Darcy Regeer is the reason that the Sabre, the Emmerichs, have been as bad as they have. He's been missing on draft picks a ton. After you miss on those draft picks, you now have to go long but he's on... Been, but, but the Pagulas have been there, and Ted's there, and that's maybe... I don't know. I, I think Darcy actually cared more about Rochester than people thought. There's caring, and then there's being bad at your job. I think he was so poor that you had to chase those free agents, and now you're just well, getting back to refilling the system. And I think the biggest problem is they don't have someone just dedicated to worrying about Rochester. I mean, he'd have other jobs, uh, other duties in the organization, like scouting. But give Rochester a GM, let that person fill the roster when there's a need, find guys in the summer, let him be the person in charge. A little like Brad Style. I mean, the Twins GM whoever it may be, but it wasn't Terry Ryan. He didn't worry about filling roster slots in Rochester. Brad Style did. He found Grossman this year. He found Schaefer. Um, you know, those two guys are with the Twins right now, which just tells you where the Twins are. <laughs> Andrew Albers, they brought him back. He went to the Twins. So let somebody have the job of, of overseeing Rochester's daily needs. All independent league guys, too. Why isn't there a restlessness here as, as we see in Wood Buffalo? Last year at the end of the hockey season, we went out and tried to interview a bunch of season ticket holders. And I'm waiting. I'm waiting to hear people say, enough of this. There was way too much patience. I almost got frustrated huh. talking to a lot of people. I keep saying, and you are the best person to answer this, I keep saying the Amherst games are becoming more like the Red Wings games. It's become, they're, it's become just an entertainment. Yes. It's not, the expectation of winning has gone. And diehard fans are so frustrated by it, but... The casual fans, you're right. It's like the red. Now it they is. just go to a, it. Not quite, but it's getting, it's getting there. close there. Now, I, now I, we just go to an Amherst game to be entertained. And, oh, look at that. That guy may be the Sabres sometimes. Same yeah. with the Red Wings. A beautiful night at the ballpark. If they win, I'm telling you, if you stood outside Frontier Field and asked 100 people to score, uh -huh. I don't know if 50 could tell you. <laughs> right. And then the other part is the, the way this Amherst team was put together last year ended up being flawed because the veterans they brought in 
did not buy in. It was a bad mix in there. And that's why you yeah. need a guy overseeing yeah. operations here who cares about what happens here because he will do a lot more research, I think, on the character part of a guy. The Twins do a really good job with that. And so, it used to be that Red Wings guys all believed they belonged in the major leagues, and I think they all still do. But Amherst guys were, like, buying in. They're here in Rochester. There's a series of guys with Amherst sweaters last year that weren't buying in, all believed they should still be in Buffalo or somewhere in the NHL playing, and they didn't give that effort and buy in in Rochester. I think you've got to get the, the right man. And the league has changed. Yeah. Now it's, you know, three years on your entry-level deal, and if you're not if, – if you don't make it, maybe you'll get a fourth. They might give you that one more year and then move on. And everybody just sees it. And it's the pride in playing for an AHL team or for that sweater – Gone. Yeah, it's coming up soon. The Buffalo Bills, the NFL season opens. Uh, we're going to talk football next on the original Rochester Press Play. Buffalo Bills quote of the week. The Buffalo Bills quote of the week, uh, just another piece of bad news, huh? Yeah, it is. I don't know how much you can blame Rex or blame the team. It's easy to say that about a culture of things, but some of this is personal responsibility with a the guy. They're not following him around 24-7. We don't know all the details with Henderson, but, you know, they've had issues and they're going to get fined by the league. Well, let's talk Buffalo Bills. They opened this week against Baltimore at Baltimore. What are you expecting to see? Uh, when did Baltimore become a Super Bowl contending, unbelievable Pro Bowl team? With Joe Flacco's back. Give me a break with that. <laughs> Come on, man. Like, this team hasn't been good, like, great good in a couple of seasons. And out of nowhere, I'm reading all week long about how fantastic this Ravens team is. And, oh, my God, you're not going to believe they signed Devin Hester. Devin Hester, who hasn't had a job until just now, is a member of the Ravens. I'm not worried about it. The line is three. I think but you could give well, Buffalo. You, you look at the line when they win this three points and it's home field. They consider these teams even. You could double it. I'm still taking Buffalo to win that game. I think Buffalo wins and they win running away. Interesting. I, I do think it's a close game. I'm not sold on everything the Bills have, but I think they'll score. I don't think the Ravens' defense is what everyone remembers with Ray Lewis and Ed Reed and, and those types of players. So I'm going to have the Bills winning. They're well, they're well coached. I mean, Baltimore in Baltimore is not a, an easy game. No, it's not. But I, for whatever reason, I don't always go with the Bills on the road, especially in certain circumstances. But I don't love this Ravens team. I think Flacco's back. I think it takes him a little while to get going. I think the Bills are ready. And I do think Tyrod, who won't say a word about it, not that he isn't already motivated, but I think he's – going to play really well on Sunday. I like the Bills to win the game outright. Do you get, do you get the feeling that there's any uh, – I, I mean, he used to play, you know, he, yeah. he came up the Ravens, and they're the team that gave him his original chance. There's no animosity no, there. No, I there? think they, they loved him. I think he has said nothing but positive things about the Ravens. I think if in a different world, they would have loved to have had him as their backup quarterback. Why not? But he's a guy who went out on his own and tried to find a job. I haven't heard one bit of that. I think that was a great organization. He ended up getting a Super Bowl ring being with that team. But I still think he wants to go prove a little bit of something to them, and I think he's going to play well. So what do we got, three Buffaloes here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Out, outright winning, too. I have them outright winning. No, I like the Ravens. I think there's two teams that had bad preseason, so I'll take Baltimore. Pick another game. Brought this guy. All right, I'm going Browns <laughs> over Eagles, four points there. And I'm taking the Browns to win outright. And not because the Eagles are starting Carson Wentz. That's not where I'm going. It's because I think RG3 is going to have the season that everyone expected him to have in his sophomore season. I know nobody counts the preseason, but if you watch those Cleveland Browns games, Games. Robert Griffin III looks phenomenal. His arm is still a cannon. He's moving really well. And there are pieces on that Browns team that can get loose. I think the Browns might be one of these surprise teams. And when I say surprise, Too six, like seven wins, right? Well, that would be surprising. But I, I, I like the Browns this week over the Eagles, outright straight up. Cool. Kevin? I like the two Dome teams game. Indy home with the Lions. And I like the Lions. I don't think Indy's very good. They don't, I, I just don't see that team. I think that team's regressing. And I think the Lions... You know, they might be 8-8, eight and eight, but I like the Lions. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take I like the, his game more, the though. Jags. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this. So if I'm right, you were right, too. I like the Jags getting points at home against the Packers. I think the Packers are going to be a really good team. 
But the Jags have a good defense. They're at home. It's going to be really hot down there. I think that plays to Jacksonville. I got them winning the game. And I got the Patriots at Arizona. Oh, really? If you can get points with New England, I don't <laughs> care who they're playing or who's at quarterback. I like them with six. Uh, so that's a look at our NFL. We have Like It or Not coming up next. The Press Box Trivia Question, brought to you by Sleep City. Stop by one of our three convenient Sleep City locations today for expert mattress advice. Here's a look at the Press Box Trivia Answer, brought to you by Sleep City. Stop by one of our three convenient Sleep City locations today for expert mattress advice. See New York in a whole new way. Amtrak is offering a 15% discount for all travel inside New York State and Montreal. Visit Amtrak.com for the See New York discount. Safe, comfortable, affordable, and easy. Amtrak. Enjoy the journey. Welcome back. This is the original Rochester Press Box presented by the mighty Genesee Brew House. This portion brought to you by Amtrak Trains. Enjoy the journey. Like it or not, uh, Colin Kaepernick's jersey, the number one selling jersey in the NFL right now. I think it goes to show you that there are a lot more people on his side than we were led to believe earlier. He says he's going to donate all of the money, his cut from those jersey sales, to the causes that he believes in. I mean, good for him. He's got an opportunity to put literally his money where his mouth is. First million dollars he's making this season and this stuff. I mean, in a roundabout way, I know we talked about last week on this show about how his message wasn't cutting through what he wanted to. Well, it kind of is now. He's getting what he wanted. Hopefully he's happy with what he's able to do here. This is funny. You know, there haven't been a lot of them that did uh, an issue that spans two shows for us. Yeah. You know, but Colin is still a headliner. I think it will be. I do think at a certain point it's going to fade away. He's going to be a backup player. I think back to the Michael Vick days when he first signed, and they were talking about there was going to be – all this attention to him and he wasn't playing at the time and it kind of went away for a while I'm not saying it's the same thing I just think our attention span you're right two weeks is a long long time in this country but again can't we just say agree with a guy's right to do it And if you disagree with what he says that's part of the country's dialogue too and the jersey sale thing Always the new, different guy. I mean, Brady was leading in jersey sales for a while when he got suspended because everybody, you know, there's guys who buy jerseys <laughs> all the time. Are you talking about really cool guys that are <laughs> handsome and super awesome? Yeah. Kevin, like it or not, it's a related, like it or not, John Tortorella says if any of his uh, his players protest in a similar fashion that they can stay on the bench. He's uh, He has not changed. <laughs> he was coach of the Amherst here 20 years ago. He has not changed. He is the same guy, which, to his credit, that's who he is. Um... You know what, he was asked that. His son did some, uh, is either in the Army or went through some training. So, I mean, he has a different perspective on the military right now. I don't see that, I, I don't see that happening anyway. Like, I don't think uh -huh. that's going to be a protest in the World Cup of Hockey. But, you know, he wanted to just maybe stamp his his uh, his word and his viewpoint. One, one minor difference, well, some people may think of as major, is these are players representing the country. Now, say that if somebody wants to make a protest, that would be a pretty major one because you're wearing a United States mm -hmm. uniform when you would be doing that. Not that you don't have the right to. I, I'm with, I don't think it was going to happen in the first place. But Could we see more in the NFL on opening day, though? I'm worried about that, legitimately. Especially, I mean, it's September 11th. We're opening on yeah. today. It's September 11th. And you have, in the preseason, guys that are afraid to make a stand because they don't want to be cut from a roster. They got their jobs now. It's easier to make a stand on opening day than it is week four of the preseason. Here's the go with this. You said you don't expect to see it in hockey. I mean, do you think it's because hockey players are less socially engaged well, or is, no, or is I don't this a think black that's white it. thing? I, I, and I don't think that's it. I do think um, it just it is the country you're representing and I think but if someone doesn't make want to make a point this is a great stage to do it on. It is funny though when you go to a hockey game and they're playing the United States anthem and they're playing the Canadian anthem and you got 
Russian players and yeah. Czech players. I mean, it is a different world than it is in the NFL, where 99% of the players are American. You've already, uh, well, you play, always ask that about the, play, why don't we play the Latvian correct. anthem? Well, <laughs> play the U.S. anthem, that's fine. But Buffalo, I, I kind of get it. They have a lot of fans. A lot of their fan base is from southern Ontario. So they play the Canadian anthem. RIT Hockey plays the Canadian anthem because I keep being told, well, so many of their players are from Canada. When they had a Finnish goalie, they didn't play the Finnish anthem. Well, then what, what are you going to do? Start the anthems 20 minutes before puck drop? <laughs> Why are they playing? Don't play the Canadian anthem. It's, it's can not it's, Canada. It's Canada. We're not sport. in Canada. They got the kids there. Lacrosse is the national sport right. of Canada. So the next time you're covering an RIT lacrosse game, they play the Canadian anthem, you're going to sit down. Hockey? Yeah. I'm not going to sit down. I respect <laughs> the, the last country. Time you I'm kidding. Brought I'm just kidding. You were hating I'm them. going to continue to say, <laughs> why, why is this play? Well, the funniest part about, like, let's say, last some, word. Let's say somebody wanted to sit down for the national anthem in the NHL. If he's a, or the World Cup hockey, if he's a starter, what do you do? Sit Indian style on the blue line there where you're waiting and then you're going to have to Zamboni because his rear end is going to melt and cause a divot <laughs> in that ice where you couldn't even do it That's if you wanted to. Concern, you really. couldn't do it. <laughs> this portion of the original Rochester Press Box brought to you by Amtrak Trains. Enjoy the journey. Unfinished Business is next. Golden outside or fluffy inside, deep pockets or delicious ridges, tasty egg or savory bacon. Experience Duncan's new Belgian waffle breakfast sandwich. It's not this or that, it's all of it. America runs on Duncan. Welcome back to the original Rochester Press Box presented by the Gen C Brew House, the Sports and Unfinished Business brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts America. Runs on Dunkin'. Buffalo Bills start this weekend. I'm very excited about this season. More than last year, actually, and I'll tell you why. Last year, a uh, ton of bandwagon fans showed up out of nowhere. And after the season that was deemed disappointing last year, those bandwagon fans went away. So now I know when I see someone walking through the mall or outside of my building where I work at, and they're wearing a Bills hat, they're going to be able to have a conversation with me about Lorenzo Alexander, outside linebacker, where last year they would have stared me in the face if I had anybody below the starting quarterback, running back, and wide receiver I wanted to talk about, right? Like, if I want to have a discussion about Mike Gillisley with a guy wearing a Buffalo Bills t-shirt, I'll be able to do that this year because all of the bandwagon fans have abandoned this team. And that's the way it should be, right? I think this team's going to be good this year. I told you this is the season that the Bills make the playoffs. I guarantee it. It's a Pat Guffey guarantee. goes places. <laughs> It's going to be interesting to see what week all those folks that jumped off the bandwagon at the end of last year jump back on this year. You know what? You're not welcome in my area of fandom, Bill. <laughs> You're not welcome at all. No, get out. You pick Baltimore and you picked against the Bill. Or yeah, you picked Baltimore and the Patriots. Get out of my face, Bill. How often do you think you're going to walk through the mall and say, let's talk about Mike Gilson? <laughs> I do that like three or four times a week. I don't know about you guys. Kevin, do something. For us. <laughs> so, Major League Baseball expands their rosters on September 1st every year for like 100 years. And they bring up all these guys. And maybe you add three pitchers. That makes some sense. But if you add like nine pitchers, it's not really baseball anymore. It's not Major League Baseball when every other batter is a pitching change to match up. It changes, it actually changes the competitive balance. For this one month of the season, the most important games, bad teams or good teams, have a chance to play a different game than they played all year and that they'll play in the playoffs. Fine, you wanna bring guys up? It's been said many, many times and that's what they should do. You declare your 25 player active roster, even if it's game by game, that's fine. But to be able to change pitchers, it's not the same game. That and even on the offense, I think you know they bring up. You got three catchers and you got two pinch hitters batting for each of the catcher and two pinch runners going for him. Exactly, can't play the it's game not like that the whole same game the they played the first, you know, from April until the end of August, and it's not the same game they'll play in the playoffs. It it well hides taken. Bad managers. All right, NFL season is starting this weekend, and I'm really hoping that we have a great year. I thought last year was lousy. I didn't like the games. There was too many penalties, too much of a mess. And I'll put the blame where it should always be, and it's on Roger Goodell. And I want to see a lot change. We talked about some of the suspensions. 
Do you get the feeling, because I do, that Roger Goodell has such an animosity towards the NFLPA and the way those two go together, it's almost as if the league does not like its own players. And I'm talking about suspensions, whether it's marijuana or what. We need a better policy. They need a way to come about this where it doesn't make the players, for what in our society are considered minor offenses or no offenses at all, look like criminals. And then they have other investigations that go on and on and on before there's a ruling on it. The NFL acts like this monolithical creature that it has become instead of looking out for their own players. Rosters should be bigger. They should take better care of their players. And I think the league would be a better league. The NFL does have some issues. They're still the king. But I think if Roger Goodell and the NFL adjusted a bit more and started, in my opinion, caring more about the players who make their product, it would be a better league. And that's what I'm hoping for in the future. Maybe it'll start this year. Goodell could prove your point because I understand that the decal, the NFL decal, has not been on Tom Brady's helmet for the most of the preseason. Uh, the courts have made it okay for him to suspend Brady another four weeks oh, for that if he wants. Need. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the guy you go after, really, at Tom Brady. No, it's too much animosity between the two. Kevin, thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure to have you. My pleasure to be here. On behalf of uh, Mike and Pat, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week with the original Rochester Press Box. Dan Moriarty will be sitting in.